Hello viewers, in this video lecture we are going to discuss on the design of T-beam and Dex lab. Basically we are going to discuss about the Corbin's method. A T-beam Dex lab type of bridge generally com comprises of the following components. These are the structural components, the longitudinal girder, cross girder and deck slab. So this is one cross section of a T-beam bridge. So here at the very top of the bridge you will find the wearing coat. The wearing coat is over the deck slab. The color of the deck slab is blue. And at the side of the deck slab there is railing in the both side. Below the deck slab, we have two types of garter. One is the main garter, that is the longitudinal garter, and the another is cross garter. The longitudinal garter is shown in the figure with the red color. These are the long longitudinal garters. If you find, if you see, don't mistake as a column or pyre. For a girder or beam, we choose the more depth than the width. More depth. So it is look like this. In the transverse direction, in this figure it is in orange color, it is one cross girder. So this is all about the cross section of a T-beam bridge. If you see the plan of the bridge, this is the plan of the bridge deck. So these three are the longitudinal garter and this one is placed at the center line of the deck slab. So the bridge has the bridge according to the plan the bridge has three longitudinal garter and it has five numbers of cross girders and a continuous slab panel is laid over the bridge and this is a slab panel which is in between the longitudinal garter and the cross garter So the longitudinal girders are spaced at intervals of 2 to 2.5 meters. Similarly, the cross girders are provided at 4 to 5 meter intervals. And for the deck slab, the continuous deck slab is provided in between the T-beam and cross girder. That is the long in between the longitudinal girder and the cross girder. For the T-beam deck slab type of bridge, the distribution of live loads among the longitudinal girders can be estimated by any one of the following rational methods. The methods are the Kurban's method, then Guyon Masonet method, and Henry Jagger method. So among these three methods, the Kurban's method is most commonly used as it has the simple computations compared to the other two methods. So now we are going to discuss about the Kurban's method. Among all the three methods, Kurban's method is the simplest one. Then the method is applicable when the following conditions are satisfied. So what are the conditions? The number one is the ratio of span to width of the deck is greater than 2 but less than 4. So see, this is the deck slab of the bridge. The total span is L and the width is W. So this L by W ratio should be in between 2 by 4. 
so that we can apply this method, Kurban's method. Then the next one, the longitudinal girders are interconnected by at least five symmetrically spaced cross girders. So if you see this, so here we have three longitudinal girders. Okay, and these three longitudinal uh, longitudinal girders are connected by five cross girders. So then only the Kurban's method is applicable. Means the system should have at least five numbers of cross girders. The third condition is the cross girders extends to a depth of at least 0.75 times the depth of the longitudinal girders. That means the depth of the cross girders should be greater than equal at least 75% of the longitudinal girder. That is the third conditions. So if these three conditions are satisfied for a T-beam deck slab type of bridge, then we go for Kurban's method. Now, so what is the application of the Kurban's method? So till now we have discussed about its conditions, when we can apply. And now we are going to discuss about what is the Kurban's method actually. What we compute. See, when the live loads are positioned nearer to the curb, the center of gravity of the live load acts eccentrically with the center of gravity of the garter system. Due to this eccentricity, the load shared by each girder is increased and or decreased depending upon the position of the girders. And this is calculated by the Kurban's theory and this is the formula. Now we shall try to understand the Kurban's method with one example. So here I have shown one part of the cross section of a T-beam deck slab type of bridge. Here as an example I have considered IRC class AA track vehicle. This is one track of the class AA track vehicle and this is another track. I have placed one track of the vehicle at a minimum distance 1.2 meter from the curb. And then I have placed the other track of the vehicle with respect to the with respect to this track. Then this figure is for position of live loads for maximum bending moment in garden A. And this figure is for maximum moment in garden A. So see, this is the formula Rx. R is the reaction. X is the X is the longitudinal garter where we are going to find out the reaction. This is equal to summation of W divided by N. Summation of W means this is a total load. N is the number of garter. And this is the summation of I. I is the moment of inertia of the garter. See, these are the notations we have used. Rx, reaction factor for the garter under consideration. Then I is the moment of inertia of each garter, each longitudinal garter. Then Dx, distance of the garter under consideration from the central axis of the bridge. If you see the figure, if you see the figure, this is the dx, center to center distance between the two longitudinal garter. Next, w. w is the total concentrated load. Then n is the number of longitudinal garter and e, eccentricity of the live load with respect to the axis of the bridge. If you see the figure, 
this is the axis of the bridge because it is one part of the bridge it will have another part like this another part like this it is one half of the bridge it will have another half the other side so this is the so this will be the center line of the bridge and and this is the CZ line of this load system so this E is the distance between the axis of the bridge this is distance between the axis of the bridge and the center line of the load system this is the E distance between center line of the load system W and the CZ line C so these are all about the notations we have used for the Kurban's method so finally we have understand that by using the Kurban's method we have to find out the reaction factor for a longitudinal guider now see for the design of longitudinal guider see for the longitudinal guider live load bending moments and shear forces are computed by the Kurban's method for each of the guiders then the maximum design moments and the shear forces are obtained by adding the live loads and the dead load bending moments and the shear forces respectively next the the reinforcements for the guarders are designed by designed for the maximum bending moments and the shear force developed in the garden which is commonly done for any types of design unlike the design of longitudinal garden for the cross garden we use another approximate method for the computation of bending moments and shear force the cross girders are assumed to be the rigid so that the reactions due to the dead loads and the live loads are assumed to be equally shared by the cross girders this assumption will simplify the computation of bending moments and shear forces in the cross girders so these are all about how we have to design a T-beam deck slab type of RCC bridge. So in the next classes, we will try to understand the design methodologies with some design example. So thank you for watching the videos. If you like the video, please share with your friends. Thank you.